Hello everyone, welcome back. Once again, I'm Mr. Norgren and our 10th lesson is titled Unity. You're going to learn how to combine two images together using a custom gradient along with a layer mask. Here is our list of terms. The gradient tool and layer masks, as well as the art principle of Unity. All right, let's get started. Okay, so go ahead and choose File Open from the menu bar or the keyboard shortcut Command O. Navigate to the Macintosh HD and the video lesson images. And for this one, go ahead and click on the SC building file. And then hold down Command and also click on SC Palms. That'll allow you to select two and open them at the same time. Click Open. These images are also located in the description for the video, too. Now go to Image Duplicate for both uh, images. So we preserve the originals. And I'll go ahead and delete that one, close that. Go to the building here and choose Image Duplicate as well. And click OK. And I could close the original there too. OK, now choose the Crop tool. And the shortcut for that is the letter C. And then crop the palms. Let me go to the palms here, actually, and do the crop. And then crop the palms so they're a little more portrait format in a vertical format. And then press return. Next step in the menu bar up here at the top, choose window, arrange, and then two up vertical. Then choose the move tool with the shortcut V and click and drag the building onto the palms image. Just drag and drop it right over there. You can now close the SC building copy and you do not need to save this. Go ahead and save the SC palms copy here with the uh, two images. And I will do command S and then find your documents folder and your video lessons folder. And this one is named last name VL and we're on number 10. Okay, now press Command T on the keyboard and adjust the size of your building so it fits in the top section of your palms images. Remember to hold down the Shift key with a corner handle that will constrain the proportions and then your building won't become distorted. Make this a little bit smaller and then move it into place and that looks good right about there. And then go ahead and press Return. Okay, at the bottom of the Layers palette, you could click on the New Layer icon, or you could use this shortcut, Shift-Command-N, and that will bring up this box, and we could click OK, and it'll create a new layer. And now choose the Gradient tool. It is the letter G on the keyboard. And just click and hold on this tool over here in the toolbar, and make sure it's the Gradient tool and not one of the other tools that are hiding with it. Okay, now click on the sample gradient at the top left of your screen up here. If you click inside the color, not on the arrow, the arrow will let you choose different gradients. But if you click inside the actual color space right here, it'll bring up the gradient editor. Okay, so what you could do here is you could load some of the preset gradients, this tiny little wheel up at the top right. You could click on that and load some different gradients. And you could click on that. And then uh, don't click OK because that will replace everything. But if you click Append, it will add to your current list and it gives you a few different choices here. OK, now to make your own gradient, first click New. And then you could change your color by clicking on the icons below the gradient right down here. And then selecting a color on this color swatch. So you can pick whatever color you want and then click OK, so that just added a color. You could also add more colors by clicking right below the gradient here, and you could pick another color. Maybe go to a green, and then click OK. And if you want to uh, add more, I could do another one here, and then I'll actually show you how to delete them too. So let's say you do a color that you didn't like, and it doesn't look good with your gradient. If you want to get rid of this, you just click on this little house icon and drag it down and it will disappear. If you want to change the opacity of the gradient too, 
you can click on one of these little icons at the top of the gradient and then lower the opacity a little bit so it'll be somewhat transparent. Okay, so once you have a gradient that you like, go ahead and click OK. And then make sure the new layer you created earlier is still active. And then click on your click and drag on your canvas here. And if you hold down shift, it'll keep the gradient nice and straight. And that will cover up your two images momentarily. We'll fix that in just a minute. If you want to try some of the other varieties of gradients at the top tool options up here, there are different gradient options like the radial gradient, the angle, the refracted, and the diamond. So you could test out one of those if you would like. For example, the radial, if you wanted to have it a gradient like that, you could. I'm going to go in and stick with this uh, first gradient here. Okay, so now what we're going to do in the layers palette over here, you could change the blending mode right up here where it says normal. Click on that and change it all the way down at the bottom, change that to color. And now you'll actually be able to see the images below. And they are now unified together uh, with color. We're now gonna create even more unity. In the layers palette, you're gonna click on the building layer right here. And then you're going to add a layer mask. So click on the layer mask icon right down here. Now default your colors to black and white by pressing the letter D. And then if it actually switched your colors up, make sure over in the at the bottom of the tools, make sure black is your foreground color. So you can press the letter X to bring it forward. And now what you're going to do is choose the gradient tool. Have the gradient already. And in the drop down menu up at the top here, go ahead and go to the first gradient, just the black and white. And then click and drag from the bottom of your image going up. And I'll hold the shift key again and that will fade the bottom of your image. You could fade it even more if you want. If yours fades from the top, you'll have to undo that, Command Z, and then check up at the top here. Maybe it has is on reverse or something. Or you could always just click and drag the opposite direction to make it fade too. Okay, so next step on the layers palette, you're gonna now notice two icons on the building layer right over here. We have the actual pixels of the building and then we have the layer mask. So what you're gonna do is click on the building icon. You could see that it uh, has the a little white box around it. So click on the building icon and lower the opacity down to about 40%, uh, 43, close enough. And then click on the layer mask icon right here. Choose the brush tool, the letter B, and make sure black is your foreground color and then you could start painting on the trees to make them uh, even more visible in front of the buildings. You know what? We should do this the easy way. Do you remember video lesson seven, select and mask? Let's do something a little bit different. This could take a lot of time if you're gonna actually do the details and make sure the trees look perfect. So instead we'll let Photoshop do the work for us. So go ahead and start by double clicking the word background in the layers palette. That will turn this palm tree layer into a normal layer. And then hide the other two layers for now. Okay, now press Command Option R, and that will bring up the Select and Mask window. And go ahead and start with the Quick Selection tool. Do you remember this one? Right up there, it's the letter W. And I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. That should be good. And then just start painting over the trees, and it's gonna select the trees very quickly and easily. And then I can get some more of these. And this is gonna make our life much easier. So you can see how fast this is going as opposed to trying to zoom in and do the details of the palm fronds there. That would take a long time. Okay, I can get this tree in there too if I want. Okay, next what you're going to do is go ahead and Actually, it looks pretty good at first glance, but since this is a white background, let's go ahead and bring up the transparency over here and see what it looks like. And now you can start to see the differences. You can see the checkerboard where it's been selected correctly, but then down here, it looks like I got some of the sky. So go ahead and hold down the Option key and then paint over these areas and that will remove that from our selected trees. 
and this is where you could spend a little more time maybe. I won't uh, do too much detail, but uh, I'll get it pretty close. Okay, that's looking pretty good there, and good enough. Okay, let's now go ahead and switch to the Refine Edge Brush tool right here. And then I'm going to bring the opacity or the transparency down to about 20%. And right about there. And then I'm also going to change the view mode to black and white so we could really see what's going on. Okay, next with this Refine Edge brush tool, make the brush a little bigger. Oops, let me get off of this mode. Refine Edge brush, there we go, now we're making it a little bigger. So now go ahead and just click and drag around your edges and you will see that the edges of the trees look a lot better now. You could actually see the details in the palm fronds. So I'll just go around the tops of my trees here. Uh, if you want to spend some more time and get all the details of the bottom of the trees and everywhere else, uh, actually, I'll, this isn't going to taking too long. I'll just quickly go around the edges here. You can go a little bit slower if you want to make it perfect. And I kind of just do a little bit at a time and then I let go to make sure that Photoshop is catching up and doing a good job with it. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Maybe some details in this bushy tree down here. And that should be good enough. So now I could really see that the edges look great. You could also zoom in and make sure that it is looking just perfect. Okay, so now at the bottom right of your window, change the output setting to selection. Yours might still be on new layer with layer mask. Make sure it's on selection here and then click OK. So now we have a selection of the trees here. We can go ahead and turn the uh, visibility back on for all the layers. And then what I'm going to do is click on my layer mask icon. Make sure it's this one. Not the building, but the layer mask icon. Make sure black is your foreground color and then press uh, Option Delete and that will fill in with black and mask out the uh, trees here just perfectly. So go ahead and now press Command D to deselect and then adjust the opacity of your building. I'll click back on the building icon right here and then bring the opacity back up. I might not need to go all the way up to 100 because you start to see some halos of the trees there, especially in the top left. So I'll keep it down at about, uh, I don't know, 70. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, so if you're a perfectionist, you could always zoom in and paint with black to mask out any areas that you missed and just use that layer mask here. So another use for layer masks and also bringing unity into the image here. Well done, everybody. Using the art element, actually art principle of unity, you learn how to blend two images together with a gradient and a layer mask. You also reviewed the select and mask function in Photoshop. Stay tuned for another slideshow. This one is about Unity. And all these images will have the feeling that everything kind of fits together. And you could achieve this with repeated art elements like color or texture. The difference between Unity and rhythm and movement is that your eye will not bounce around the image as much. Thanks and have a great day. And don't forget, always be present, professional, and polite.